I'd like to ask you if you would start by telling us how you were introduced to treatment. I was introduced in treatment in May 5th of 1999. I went to Wesker because I got arrested with a large quantity of methamphetamine, 10,000 milliliter flask. And so basically I went to Wesker to avoid the prison sentence. A little bit of the background off of that, I started getting high in 1972. So I was a little kid, started smoking pot, drinking alcohol. I spent 28 years getting high. Uh, mm -hmm. What brought me to West Care, like I said, was the catalyst was the judge, for lack of better terms. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to West Care, I didn't have a plan on staying clean and sober. That wasn't part of the deal in my mind. The, the plan was just to get a lighter prison sentence or reduce no prison sentence. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Uh, mm -hmm. That's good. So once you were uh, in West Care, uh, which is a non treat a non profit, therapeutic community. What did you experience in your um, treatment there? What was different about Westcare? So Westcare was the only treatment facility I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that. I said the, the one thing that actually uh, drove it home for me, it, it taught me accountability and it taught me to uh, every action has a reaction. And the most one of the most important things I learned out of that is I hold myself and my peers accountable. And so what this started, what one of the biggest things I learned out of West Care is to actually be confronted and confront somebody else without resorting to violence. Because when we grow up in the street, that's kind of, you know, the norm. If somebody confronts me, I'm just going to assault you and do, do what I got to do. Um, West Care actually opened my eyes and taught me the, the value of actually friendship and being able to confront these people and say, hey, take a look at this. And people would come to me and say, take a look at this. More importantly, it taught me the value of routine. Yeah, you know, so the, the one thing that I learned out of uh, in West Care, one of the main things was the routine. Every morning I wake up, the first thing I do is make my bed. Until I got married, that was the very first thing. I'd open my eyes, I'd talk to God, I'd say my prayer, mm -hmm. I'd get up, and then, then I would make my bed, then I would start my day. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's uh, I, the, one of the biggest things I think that came out of West Care is I learned not to overcomplicate my recovery and things in life. Mm -hmm. It actually taught me that there's nothing that is that traumatic that oh my god you got to resort to it mm -hmm. what it actually taught me was to sit down and to analyze a problem so when i sit when it, something comes up i put it on a piece of paper and then i say if i do option a what happens if i do b what happens if i do c these are things that i learned at west care you know um it, it actually changed my life i, I can't even say that it, it, it just opened a whole new world to me mm -hmm. you know i um uh, when i was up there i created a goal list and this is something that I think is very important for anybody in recovery is you have to have a goal list. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and I wrote my little goal list. I did three months, six months, uh, nine month, one year, 18 months, three year, and five year goal. Mm -hmm. Everything, and what my counselor told me, aim high, Dave. Aim high, what do you, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Everything I put on that list, I have. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, I, won't, I, I, I put on that list, I wanted a, de a degree. I graduated from UNLV with honors. You know, I wanted a GT500. I have one. I, everything I put on that list. But the most important thing that comes out of the goal list and what people don't uh, understand about it, a goal list is a roadmap to where you see yourself going in life. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I work with a lot of people, so I, I have them always make a goal list. And then as we go through it, and for example, hey, I need a driver's license. Great, what do you have to do to get a driver's license? Well, the first thing I got to do is I got to get the book. So we put that subheading under that goal, mm -hmm. get the book. Then you have to read the book. Then you have to go and take the test. Mm -hmm. But you list all those things out, and then as you do each one of them, you take a yellow highlighter and you highlight it in yellow. Mm -hmm. The concept of this is because humans were very visual. So when I have a piece of paper with all those goals on it, and then all of a sudden I start highlighting yellow, 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 here's the reward for recovery. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the, that's the theory behind it, you know? So I, I'm real big on goal lists. I tell everybody, get a goal list, get a goal list, get a goal list. Right. David, it sounds like uh, the experience in West Care really changed your life. Can you talk a little bit about the peer experience in West Care? Because um, that's what set uh, West Care apart from other treatment centers. It was peer-oriented or a therapeutic community. Is that correct? Uh, oh, absolutely. And, you know, the, the peer, again, this goes back to what I said earlier about uh, confronting people and being confronted without violence. And, you know, it learns, it teaches you how to interact in society. Because this is the problem, you know, as an addict and alcoholic, we don't care. That, that's the problem. We don't care about what you think or what you think or what happens. None of that matters. 
when you're in that therapeutic peer peer on peer groups, this is when you learn to actually stop and think about your brother before you do something. And if I do something, how does that affect other people? And it, it, I can't, it's, the value of this, the, you can't put a price on it. it. There is no way to put a price on it. My best friend, my first true friend, I made in West Care. Me and him are still friends to this day. 22 years later, mm -hmm. 22 years we've been friends. I've seen him go through good, I've seen him go through bad, I went through good and I went through bad, and we rely on each other. You know, you cannot change that. I mean, there is no price tag you can put on that. I think that it's a very important thing that as we come through this and we start to interact with these people and you start to make these friendships that you turn around and the next step obviously is to take it and pass it to next and teach the next generation. For example, uh, I've been going to the Terrace Springs Ranch for 22, over 22 years, the first Saturday of every month. Mm -hmm. I go up there to take a meeting up there. And it, it's a twofold that reasoning because I go up there because every time I walk up into that facility and I look around and I remember what brought me there. Mm -hmm. By remembering what brought me there, if we don't forget history, chances are better that we're not gonna repeat it. Mm -hmm. But more importantly is I actually to get the opportunity to go up there and talk to the people that are in that facility. I know personally when I was there, if somebody came from an outside meeting and they came in there and they're talking, it was kind of like blah, 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 blah. But when the people that came that had been in the same seat that I sat in, that's a big difference because now I'm gonna start to listen to you because you know what, you understand what a slip process is. You understand all these inner workings of Westcare and the, the true value of it. Uh, I tell everybody up there every month, you know, I explain it to them, the alumni, the, the alumni is critical in your recovery. While you're up there, you've got your peer group that's gonna support you, but when you get out of there, guess what? You're on your own, in theory, unless you come and be part of this alumni. The alumni is the foundation of your recovery. You know, it's your building block. And so when you come to alumni, we're not, we have AA, NA, CMA, there's all kinds of different. There is no one A out of this whole group. We are a plethora of everything. You know, we started it, there were three of us. There's over 75, probably 75, almost 100 of us now. You know, so that just goes to tell you there is nothing that anybody will come across that somebody in our group hasn't already gone through. And you know, that that's the most important thing. And again, that was just like when I was sitting up on the mountain and people were coming up there from the outside, it was a little harder for me to relate to them when they came in there and said, oh, I have 22 years, yeah, I went to meetings and I just all of a sudden I'm cured when I'm sitting up in this facility. When somebody that actually had been through there and they came up there and they started talking to me and they start talking to me about my counselors and they start talking to me about the kitchen and they start talking and start running down the whole program to me, now all of a sudden you got my attention. And what I found is, that, again, I've been doing this a long time, I give out my phone number to a lot, a lot, a lot of people there. In fact, two two weeks ago, I was going on my way home. I stopped at a 7-Eleven. This gentleman didn't recognize him, but I was getting out of my truck and uh, he comes up to me. He's like, I know you, you were at Harris Springs Ranch. I just graduated. Great, I gave him a business card. I said, you know what, call me, get involved. Because if you want to save yourself, this is the way to do it. And I can't speak for everybody. Is there other ways to do it? I'm absolutely sure they are, there is. But what I can tell you is historically, out of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that I have seen go through Westcare, the ones that make it are the ones that get involved. You know, uh, any recovery that you go to, you know, they're gonna tell you service work is critical. Service work is critical. You know, this is my part where I go up there the first Saturday of every month. We also do our firework booth every year. You know, we, we stay open 24 hours a day seven days a week to sell fireworks. Why do we do this? So we take all that money that we collect, we turn around and we, we donate it up to our clients. We go up there, we throw big parties up there for them. We throw barbecues, you know, we give, send Christmas time. Everybody in both facilities, they're gonna be sitting on Santa's lap. There, there's no two ways about it. And you, sometimes, you know, they, the, the men especially, you know, when they're 50, 55 years old, and you got some guy sitting up there in a Santa suit and they have to come and sit on that lap and you're asking them, hey, what do you want for Christmas? You know, this is something, the whole purpose of all of this is to show the people that are in the facilities that you can have a good time 
without drugs and alcohol. That there are people that have been there in the exact same position, and this is how we got out of it. You know, uh, there there is a lot of support. I I just can't say enough about it. I hope that this uh, we need more. We need more. That's all I can say. So. David, thank you very much for spending time and telling us your story and the power of alumni. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you.